join me as we talk all things true crime. And shattered. The parents have called in and loved, but the mother has written on a wall. Hey, mom, now they can't find her. They've been feeling worse. Turn it over to another agency. Let's get some help. Where are your kids? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? You're over here in Hawaii? Chad, where are Lori's kids? Four were stabbed multiple times and were likely asleep during the attack. Some had defensive wounds. Most of them had just like one that was the lethal uh, stab wound. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be listening to the jailhouse phone calls with Alex and his family in these calls. You'll hear from Buster. There will also be John Marvin in these calls, John Marvin's wife, Liz, his sister and brother, Randy and Lynn. They will be discussing things um, revolving around Buster getting back into law school. They're going to reference somebody named Butch. And now Butch is an, an attorney that Alex knew, who he paid 60 grand for, or two to get Buster back into law school. They're also going to talk about uh, the dean at USC, and his name is William Habard. These are just some things that these calls are going to reference. The point of listening to these calls now, even though they were from 2021, is I feel like we can gather different perspectives now that we've gained all the knowledge that we have from the trial, from the body cam footage, everything that they've released to us. I think that we can all um, look at these calls and listen, and we can just pull out um, different things that we just hadn't heard before, or maybe it just means different now that we've put like faces to the names, et cetera. So I thank you all for being here. I want to get right into it because there's a lot to play. I will be pausing them and sort of discussing um, when need be, maybe just to say like who's speaking or what my thoughts are on it. But I really do want to just play these calls, sit here with my coffee and listen to the calls with you guys. So thank you, George, Georgie and Princess Megan Elsa, Pam, Candace, and everyone who's in chat. Thank you for joining. And let's just get into it. And then I'll pull up some comments from chat while we play the calls. And yeah, thanks for being here, everybody. So again, this these calls take place in 2021 and then into early 2022. This is all before Alex was um, indicted on two counts of murder. So that didn't happen until July 14th, 2022. So this is, you know, a ways away from him being, you know, charged with the murders. At this point, he does know he's a suspect because of the police interviews that we had seen where they basically tell him, yeah, we don't have anyone else to go off of, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of the climate of these phone calls. So let's just listen to them. Some of the calls we played in our last live stream. So in case you're looking for a specific one, it might be in the, the live stream we did on Friday. So these are some calls that I'm just going to play all the way through. So thank you for being here and listening and chatting. And I'll be in chat talking with you guys, too. So thank you again. And let's get into it. We're going to start with a few minutes of clips to kind of refresh us on the case. It's only like two minutes and then I'll go right into the phone call. OK, thank you for being here, everybody. And good morning, Delena and Chitty Chatty Meg and everyone else. The long story. My son was in a boat wreck a few months back. I'm going to England and I'll be there. And I'm going to learn the accent, and I'm going to learn how to work it, and me and my boy going to have a good time. He was a nice lad. Alex Murdoch, at 4147 Moselle Road, I need the police to pass us immediately. I have an Alex Murdoch on the line, caller from 4147 Moselle Road. He's advising that his wife and child was shot. I've been up to it now, it's bad. Do y'all store any weapons out here? Um, we don't store them, but they're... You know, they're frequently out here. Mm -hmm. I need to find out if there were any out here. I went to the house and I got a gun, probably overreacting, but what you got, you know, that, there? that I own or that's in there now. That you own. 
Alright. That I own. I mean, Paul has guns scattered all over the place. Some of our guns aren't there, but 750 on June 7th, Maggie calls a Barbara, and that would be the last call that she ever made or received. She read a group text at 831 16 seconds. The last red text was at 84927. It's an upward shot. Yours is one of the colors. She was just as beautiful inside as she was outside. I mean, she threw herself into her boy's life. I mean, you know, she never took not working uh, for granted. I mean, she. I mean, she might not have worked, but I promise you, she worked. And she worked to make sure me and Paul and Buster had everything. It looked like he had stolen. He denied to you three times that he ever went to those kennels, did he not? He did. His buddy, his friend, and his law partner, 34 years, told you three times I was never there. That's, that's and, correct. And you know now that's a lie. When I saw the video. Please wait. So here we go. We're getting right into the calls. We're going to travel back in time to October 21st, 2021. This call is his brother, John Marvin. Good morning, Adrian and CJ. Everyone else who has joined. Elaine, too. Thanks for being here. Hi, Wolfie. Great. Well, I can ask you a call. It must be some chemical in the damn air or something. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a blanket. Maybe I can get away from the blankets and go away. Your party has answered. Please hold for billing acceptance. All phone calls are subject to monitoring uh, and this, recording. This is worse, is it? Hello, this is an Amtel operator calling from Alvin S. Glenn. So one thing I noticed about this now, again, right now, you can just hear small talk that Alex is saying to like an inmate. Um, before John Marvin picks, picks up the phone. So as you all know, in, in jail phone calls, the inmate says his name so that the person receiving the call knows you know, who's calling and who's on the other end. I find it interesting in this call, you hear Alex say his name as Alec. And then in the phone call with his brother, John Marvin calls him Alex. So he says his name with a C, but his brother calls him his name with an X. I don't know. I just think that's interesting. Detention Center with a prepaid collect call from Alec. To accept this prepaid collect call, press 1. To decline this call, press 2. To disallow future calls, press 3. All phone calls are subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using Amcal. Hey man, how you doing? I hope I'm not calling you too early out there. No, no, we've been up for a while. We just got three breakfast and what time is it out there now? It's, it's almost nine. Okay. Ten four. Yeah. Hey, How you, you doing? doing? How's Buster? He's good. He's good. He's doing well. He's out there. Hey, um, <clears throat> John. Yep. In court the other day, they made a big deal about things. They're going to be moving to try to prevent us from selling stuff. Right. We need to to get as much as we can completed and on that note and, um did mark ball ever respond to you um he did not I'll, I'll follow up with that this morning well i just know that they're getting ready to file, and i mean i don't know if it's going to be a day or a week or you know two weeks and you know i mean they would theoretically have to serve me or buster now, he referenced Mark Ball, and now Mark Ball is Alex's former colleague. Um, at one point, he was being called a co-conspirator or a possible one, but I don't think that anything has really um, manifested from all that, but he is somebody who used to work with Alex. And good morning, Sarah and Dustin. Good to see you guys. Shoot, give me a second. I accidentally moved the mouse. Alec. To accept this prepaid collect call, press 1. To decline this call, press 2. To disallow future calls, press 3. 
All phone calls are subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using them. They would theoretically have to serve me or Buster, but right. Buster doesn't accept service. Well, let me ask you a question, Alex. So the, um, I'll follow up with, with Randy and Mark on that, but the, the dump truck and excavator. Yeah. What are your, do you have an issue if I buy them and put no. the money towards it? No, no issue at all. I mean, it, that's, I mean, that'll be the, the easiest way to do a, a, a you know, a, a sale. I mean, if you, if you need them, don't do it just to help me. Well, I'll, um, you know, I, I haven't communicated with anybody since I left, but when I left, I didn't have any buyers on either, on those two. Yeah. Like I say, don't do that. I mean, if you want well, that's them, all right. I, should I give them to you? No, no. No, nope, not going to do that. But, okay, well, I know what to do, and I'll, I'll be working I'm on serious. Right if you need them, John Marvin? No, I, no, I don't need them. I just... Or, it, or it if be, you have a use for them, I promise you, uh, I'll give them to you. Well, but I'm not going to do that. So, either way, so I'm going to follow up and see if I've got any any real leads on them. And you might speak to Jim if you get a chance, just to yep. find out what kind of time frame he thinks before they get any kind of order preventing us from doing anything. Okay. And I mean, well, I'm just know. I'm just doing doing everything by the book. And I love how John Marvin has to have it, you know, in verbal record on the audio that I'm just doing everything by the book. Um, but I did pause it because we do know that it was in November where when they froze their assets and their um, everything financial was just kind of freezed up by the government, by law enforcement. So at this point, again, it's um, October that hasn't taken place. But, you know, within maybe like a week or two of this phone call, it, it happens. And, um, yeah, and it's and going to pay. It ain't like we're squirreling it away. It's going to pay bank stuff. Well, it goes to the unsecured note, so so everything else has something securing it, so it makes sense that unsecured items would go to an unsecured note. Hello? Hey, man. Hey, how you doing? Y'all on the way home? Well, we just left our, our hotel. We're going to get a bunch of Bob Green and come. So at this point in this phone call, it's still in October. This is with John Marvin again, and then Buster hops on. And this is while they're in Las Vegas. Now, remember, um, we heard a little bit of the phone call in our last live stream with Buster and Alex while he was in Las Vegas. And Buster tells him how, you know, paparazzi was following them around, etc. But this phone call with John Marvin, they're speaking. And then when Buster gets on, it just seems like Alex is like annoyed that he's like not with them and that they're like distracted. It seems like he's bothered that he's not like the main focus of um, them at this moment. Like they're busy, they're on vacation, um, all that stuff's going on. And you can just tell in this phone call, in my opinion, you guys let me know. And those on replay comment down below. Um, it just seems like he's like bothered that the focus and attention isn't all on him through this phone call. We're going to make our way back by the Hoover Dam, back to the airport. What time is it there? It is about 1 o'clock. We don't fly out till 10 tonight. Huh? We don't fly till 10 tonight. Oh, y'all got the red eye. So what time do y'all get back home tomorrow? 6 in the morning. 6 in the morning. Boy, y'all going to be tired. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no doubt. 10 for a no. with you? Yeah, he's right here. You want to talk to him? Yeah. Hold on just a second. Hello. Hey. Hey. You got access to the Carolina games? Um, depends on where we are. Sometimes driving through the desert and stuff, the service gets a little, uh, a what little What time spotty. do they play? Out here, well, they play at 7.30, but out here it's 4.30. 7.30 tonight, who do we play? Yeah. Huh? Bus? Yeah. Bus? Is anybody in the back? What? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm sorry. What were you saying? Who do we play? Texas A&M. That's what I thought, but I wasn't sure. Yep. So, all right. Well, where y'all going? Y'all getting in the car now? Or y'all riding now? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get in the van. We're going into a gift shop. Um, what? We're gonna get in the van and and run back through the Grand Canyon and then go over to the Hoover Dam. Oh, y'all rented a van. 
Yeah, we rented a car and it's a van. I got you. All right, well, y'all sound busy. I'll check up with you later. I love you. No, no, I'm busy. You doing okay? I can't hardly hear Can you hear me? TV. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing good. You know, good as you can. Shit, I mean. Dealing with it, you know. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I understand. Drive your ass crazy, but, I mean, I wish I had a recording that play you some of the noises you hear at night. Really? Coming from these fools. But I gotcha. Yeah, I still get offered daily somebody tries to buy my shoes. <laughs> well you you gonna sell them to somebody? <laughs> you don't know how close I've come. If I had any other shoes, Jim Jim put some money on my canteen on Wednesday, so I ordered some stuff, and you get it on Monday, they say, but I mean, man, this food, guy, you can't imagine what food's like in here. I bet it's pretty rough. I mean, I try to make myself eat. Number one, it's everything, you know, I mean, it's very little meat. It's, um, you know... And there's no salt, no no seasoning, no nothing. So all you can do to check your shit down is a lot of beans. Um, a lot of beans and carrots and shit like that. Right. So, anyway. I'm going to try and do push-ups and sit-ups to myself. It's a filthy place, but they, they finally gave me um, on a, on a break, they finally let me clean. They let me get me some cleaning solutions and some rags. So I cleaned up and swept out and washed it. Shit hold down. So that's at least good. I got you. So, you know, things are improving. One thing Alex always does to kind of fill the conversation is he'll be like, well, Anyway, like you just hear him with everyone that he talks to. Well, anyway, but right now I just feel like, um, like Delaina said, Buster seems like he really isn't impressed. Um, you know, he's just listening to his dad talk about the mundane um, jail stuff while he's in Vegas right now. So remember, they're still in Vegas. They're on their way doing stuff. And then you'll just hear sort of how he's trying to manipulate Buster to kind of feel sorry for him. And good morning, everyone who's joined. 10-4. Did Donna talk, did Donna talk to you? No, she just talked to John and Randy. Why, why didn't she talk to you? Don't know. was never asked to talk to her. Huh? I don't know. I was never asked to talk to her. So Donna Maddox is the doctor who conducted Alex's psych evaluation and diagnosed him with severe opioid use disorder and was concluding he was not in danger to himself or others. So that's who Donna is, who they're making reference to. And thank you, Wolfie. I appreciate that. And you guys do too in chat. So I really appreciate your guys' feedback and all your opinions too. Huh. I mean, I told her. Anyway, I figured she talked to you first. No, sir. She never contacted me, and no one ever told me that I should talk to her. Right. But I don't understand why she didn't think she did. That makes sense to me. Anyway. Everybody else is doing good? Yeah, man, doing good. Just, you know, the new developments with the motions and everything, trying to get us to quit selling stuff. I don't know really what that's going to have in store. Yeah, I told y'all that was coming. Yeah, man, this is this Eric. Now, remember, you know, uh, at this point, Buster is still, you know, early 20s, just lost his mother and his brother just months prior um, all this stuff is going on. Their assets are about to be frozen. All this legal stuff is about to come down on them. And 
His father is in jail. His mother is gone. The only people that he has to guide him are his uncles, really. And here, you know, he tells his father, like, I just don't really know what's going to be happening with these, um, with our assets being frozen, etc. Not in those words, but and instead of offering some sort of like advice or comfort or anything, Alex is just like, yeah, I told you guys that was going to happen. <laughs> and then this is when they introduce Eric Blonde. And we know who he is because of, you know, the, the trial and just the media coverage. Um, but back then, back at this time, they're just being introduced to this guy. And everyone knows that he's the attorney that represents the Gloria Satterfield. And over the weekend, they have announced that he will be assisting, I believe her name is Susan Smith, Stephen Smith's mother. Um, I'm not sure if he's her main lawyer, but he did state that he will be assisting them. So when they do the um, when they exhume Stephen's body, etc., I believe that Eric Bland is going to be um, helping them out. So we will still see Eric. But at this point in this phone call, you know, they're just realizing who he is and he's, you know, making himself known. This you know, Eric, you that I said that was coming. No, nah, I just saw it on Twitter. No, nah, I called Jim Marvin the other day to tell to tell him he needed to do it as quickly as possible because they were going to be doing it any day, making a yeah. motion. So this Eric, this Eric Bland guy seems like a real, a real charm. Well, you know, this is his five minutes in the sun, you know. Yeah. And the way Alex just kind of brushes off the stress that obviously Buster is confiding him in. Um, you know, and he's just like, well, he just wants his five minutes in the sun. And it's like, no, this is serious. Like, your son is stressed. Things are coming down on a legal standpoint, and he doesn't know how to handle it. It's just it's just very interesting to hear Alex just being kind of, like, cold, like we all suspected he was. Um, yeah, dad just doesn't connect with Buster's reality. Thank you for that. I agree. I can't believe John didn't tell you that I said that the other day. And we heard that phone call, I believe, on our last live stream where Alex does talk to John Marvin and he's pretty much saying, like, you know, to expedite this whole selling stuff, etc. And but instead of kind of like doing what he should be doing by, like, guiding his son here, he's one of he resorts to his normal routine of manipulation and stirring the pot and you know, pinning someone against somebody else, etc. cetera. Um, but while he's the saint in the middle, you know, just kind of like stunned. And he's just trying to be like, I can't believe John Marvin didn't tell you that. And it's like, not the issue at hand, really. Whatever day I called, when I went to court that afternoon, when I called on Wednesday, I mean, I don't know if there's anything to be done, but told him we need to get in touch with Mark Ball, get that fund get it on that thing. I didn't know how quickly it was going to be done. I said it could be any day now. It could be three days. It could be a week, but it was coming. Well, it's done now. so no reason in fretting over it. No, he's filed a motion. He doesn't have an order yet. No, I know. I understand that it's not ruled upon. So, uh, and I would think they got to serve me to do it. Well, they should have to serve one of us if they're going to stop if they're going to stop me from doing something. Well, they can only serve you if you accept service. They can't serve you. I guess they can serve you individually to keep you from doing anything as power of attorney. But that don't keep John Marvin from selling the shit, you know. I mean, the shit that ain't got titles, especially. Uh, yeah, well, you know, John Marvin's too scared to do anything that's teetering. Uh -huh. I said John Marvin's too afraid to do anything that's teetering. John Marvin's afraid to do anything that's teetering. And it's just interesting to hear Buster and Alex speaking that way because it's like, you know, not to hold it against him for the rest of his life, but, you know, Buster did the wrong thing and plagiarized in law school, you know, and it got him kicked out. 
And then we're going to hear later in these phone calls that, you know, he did get reaccepted, but it had probably a lot to do with that 60 grand that Alex gave his attorney friend, Butch, who then gave it to the dean that he's friends with. And, you know, they just don't really want um, the Murdochs back in the college just yet, you know, so it's because of all the um, hype around him being in jail at this moment. So it's just very muddy waters. And here John Marvin's trying to do things right. And we even heard him on the phone call like a few minutes ago saying that he's just trying to do things by the book. And yet, you know, Alex and his son Buster are kind of speaking badly about that. And it's like, it's just interesting to see the way that they rationalize moves that they do. You know what I mean? Did he follow up with Mark Ross? Though, I mean, yeah, we, we've reached out to Mark, but he won't get back in touch with us. He's been that way for two weeks. Huh? I said, we, we've been reaching out to Mark, but he won't get back in touch with us. He's been that way for two weeks. Well, he doesn't respond. He doesn't respond to our emails or, or our calls. What, Randy won't do anything with it? Um, no, I mean, I think Randy's trying to help. I just, you know, I don't think he'll talk to Randy either. But his daughter failed the bar, so karma's eating at people. She failed the bar? Yep. Did Brooklyn pass? Yeah, she did. Why didn't y'all tell me? I thought, I thought someone did. No, when did y'all find out? Um, so we found out when Brooklyn and I were up in the mountains um, with Marion and Bart. So how was So how was that? Uh, it was it was fine. It was fine. So what they have to say? Mm, they didn't actually mean they didn't say anything. Huh? They didn't say anything. Did they say anything about me? No. Nah. Good, bad, or indifferent? Never was brought up. So, I figured that based on some of their responses when I tried to text them. Yeah. All right, my man. I know you got stuff to do. I ain't gonna hold you up. I might call you um, a little later to see if I can get a score. Okay. Um, and I figured out as well. You know, I didn't know that the customer service number was you calling me from there. And when I got several calls from it, I, I thought it might. You know, I thought it was a negative thing, so I actually blocked. Uh, I blocked you actually, but I've unblocked you now, so you should be able to call me. Do you have that thing set up? No, I don't have anything set up. I don't think you can set it up until I actually, you know, get a call. Well, when will, when will you have time and I'll – we can do that tomorrow when you're back in stuff. Yeah, you know, the service is so spotty out here. I'm not, I'm not certain that I'd be able to, to do it today. All right, well, I'll just call John Marvin. It's, uh, all right, what time is it there now? Um, here it's one one fifteen. And the game starts at – 4.15 there? 4.30 there? Yeah, so it, 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 the game's at 7.30 Eastern so it's 4 time. 4.15 here? Yes. 4.15 and the game's at 7.30? Correct. What channel's it on? Um, I believe SEC Network, but I'm not sure about that. It's on one of the major broadcasting services. It's on ESPN or, you know, something like that. You don't get ESPN in here. I love how Buster's just like, you know, you'll be able to find it. It's on ESPN. We don't get ESPN in here. It's just so, it's interesting to hear like these, um, just because of who they are, how prominent they are. You know, we see the pictures of their family together before all this happened. And it's just like, you never would have imagined, like if you ran into the Murdochs like years ago, 10 years ago, that they would be where they were now. So to hear them kind of adjusting to this new lifestyle with one of them being in jail is just interesting to me. I wanted to pause it though, because of the comment on screen, just because I have the timeline right here. 
Um, Chopper said, I heard a rumor that they reopened Stephen Smith's case because of what they found in Alex's home. Now, I also heard that rumor. We don't know exactly why they reopened it. For uh, a case to be reopened, there has to be, you know, significant evidence, physical, whatever. Uh, I do know that on October 14th, 2021, right before, you know, this phone call has taken place, he was arrested and charged with, you know, swindling the millions of dollars from the Satterfield family. So that was October 14th. And then I also see on the timeline, it says, um, hold on, related to Stephen Smith. I just want to see when that was reopened in comparison to when he was arrested. Looks like it was reopened very soon after Maybe somebody in chat knows exactly when. But, yeah, they, they reopened that case, you know, days after his arrest. And somebody else said something. Oh, yeah, um, MK, I agree. He said, I don't think that uh, Buster doesn't seem to want to be on the phone with him. You'll see, like, in the rest of these calls, too, Buster wants to get off the phone in a hurry, John Marvin, and especially John Marvin's wife. At times, like it just seems like she really just doesn't want to be on the phone with him at all. Um, and then later in the phone calls, Buster definitely seems like he just wants to get off the phone. He even says, like, you know, if you have something important to say, like, just write me a letter. So I'll probably call you to see the score. Okay. All right. I love you. All right. Love you too. Uh, Hey, hey, hey. Y'all hunting? Uh, we're going to this after. Now, there at the end of the phone call, you know, they tried to catch his attention again real quick, and he didn't hear it. <laughs> so that call ended with him, like, you know, asking, like, hey, wait. Um, and then I have somebody, Kib Kibby, Kib Kitty says that it was June 21st that they reopened it. So thank you so much. So that was very soon after um, we're talking to 20, 2021, Kip Kitty. Let me tell you what you ought to do, Buster. I think the damn um, theaters were full over there at Moselle. If you felt like going back there, I bet with nothing going on, I bet there's deer all over them things. Not me back. So this phone call, I don't know if you guys had seen my um, video that I did with just this phone call's excerpt, but I find it very chilling. I find it, um, there's more to this conversation being had here, and you guys let me know your thoughts on it. Um, and actually, I look on my timeline, it says June 22nd is when the state officials announced they were reopening investigations into the death of um, Stephen Smith, who died very closely to the Murdoch home. Um, the investigations name Buster Murdoch in a lot of their uh, investigative notes, etc. Everything was hearsay, so we don't know exactly what evidence reopened this. But yes, I want to correct myself. It wasn't after he was arrested in October. It was after the murders took place. So the murders took place on June 7th. And then according to this timeline, it seems like the 22nd is when they made the announcement. So they might have like opened it on the 21st or whatever kib kitty but it seems like they made the announcement to the public according to this timeline on the 22nd so very interesting and we will all be following to see what exactly they found now for this sunflowers um saying that this call is code for something but buster isn't having it um it's haunting i agree uh you know for him to suggest buster to be out where um his family was murdered and to kind of be talking about it. Like it's just, yeah, you should go out there. And at one point, good morning, titanium built. And if anyone hasn't checked out titanium built or the evil CJ show, you guys should check out those channels. They're really good as well. And I appreciate you guys being here in chat. Um, what I was going to say is, let me just play this call and then we'll discuss more. What's that going to be for me? So Buster, he wants Buster to go out. Of course, I pause it and play it. He wants Buster to go out to Moselle to maybe hunt some deer. 
And Buster's like, you know, why would I go out there? What's it going to do for me? And Alex's response, like, I know, I don't know how you guys feel, but he says, kill a deer. And the way that he says it, it almost makes it seems like Alex sees hunting and killing something as therapeutic. So that's like almost how he's like rationalizing it to Buster that he should go out to their property, even though, you know, it's only been a few months since his family was murdered out there. And mind you, they don't have the murderer in custody at this point. And Alex hasn't been charged with the murder. So they're just sitting there wondering. I mean, Alex is wondering, you know, where the investigation is going. And I'm sure Buster is, too. But the way that he suggests this, it just sounds so much like he's saying, like, that killing something would be therapeutic. What's that going to do for me? Kill a deer? I'm not going hunting out there. I'm just letting you know. I'm Buster. Also, I wanted to tell you this. I just remember this. You know, they replanted those sunflowers. Do you have any interest in hunting that field? No. Do you care if um, if I let Jim do it? No. You sure? Yes. All right, you want me to come to call you if we hunt? Well, I, I should be out by then. Jim, Jim who? Jim Griffin. Oh, what, let him hunt deer out there, or what are you talking about? No, I'm talking about, I didn't know if you wanted to hunt ducks out there. If you do, then I want you to do it. If not, then I'm going to let him do it. He knows how to facilitate a dove hunt? What? I said he knows how to facilitate a dove hunt? Well, I mean, you know, I don't think it would be... I hadn't really... I don't know. Did you just do you want a dove hunt out there? No. Not at all? Uh Uh-uh. Hey. So a lot of people are thinking that they were speaking in code or that something's hidden out there or that Alex wanted on audio a a reason why his lawyer might be seen out there. Because remember, they had drone footage like uh, people are definitely watching them, you know, in in Las Vegas, around the community. You'll hear Buster talk about in this um, recording of uh, a gas station somebody at the gas station yelling to him. You know, it's it's definitely starting at this point in their life. And it's still going on. I mean, I've seen pictures over the weekend of Buster um, walking his dog with with Brooklyn. So this is when it's all starting for them. Now, I paired it with this photo from court. Um, it's John Marvin, John Marvin's wife, Liz, who we'll hear in this phone call, uh, Brooklyn, and of course, Buster. And thank you for being here. Hi, Rebecca. It's good to see you. Can you How hear are you? Me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. Am I catching you at a bad time? Buster said you were downstairs. Yep, I'm just doing my Peloton exercise. Baby Have you exercised I... today? Huh? Have you exercised today? Not yet, I haven't. But I tell you this, I did so hard over the weekend, and yesterday, um, I, my, my knee started hurting really bad, and so I hadn't done it yet today. I've been waiting. But, I mean, I've been doing them um, mountain climbers every day. You have? Yes, I That's have. awesome. Huh? Well, um, do they have a little weight room or anything for y'all? They don't have no little weight room for us. They might have one. They got a weight room in the in the, in the prison, in the jail. They got one out there that some people can use, but we can't use it. Well, did you find the library? No, and they might found the library yet either. Um, I did get a letter that said that the book, you know, is considered contraband. So they well, will um, not allow it. I don't think that's the one that I sent. I'm not sure. Did it say who sent it to you? No, but it said it came from Amazon. Oh, really? Well, I talked to the lady. I guess that was on Monday. What's today? Tuesday? Yeah, I guess it was just yesterday. Um, and she said that she would, because I told her, I was like, look, there's going to be a book coming. Is there any way that you can just donate it to the library? for Alec to be able to read it and whoever else wants to read it. 
So uh, I'll find out, but I'd like to say I don't. I'll ask. I don't think uh, ain't nobody in here I know been to the library, but I'll see if they'll let let you go. I don't think I don't think they'll let me go. See, they don't let me do much. They 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 and I mean I think they think it's for my own good. You know, uh, um, as far as you know, I'm not around everybody. I'm only around. I got you. You know, a smaller group of people. You know what I'm saying? But, so, um, Lizzie, I got your letter um, Saturday, but we were on lockdown and not allowed to use the phone, so just I wasn't able to call. And um, anyway, they won't. They only have visitation on certain days. Thursday's not one of them, and I have to put in ahead of time. You know, and it's only video, you know. And i tell you this, there's another thing. You guys tell me there's a machine. That machine over there, you can have a video call, right? i got to get emails. Will you do me a favor? Yeah. Will you send me a letter with everybody's email address, uh, you know, um, uh, really yours and Buster's and John Marvin's, can send it to me first, but rather than having to do another one, just send me everybody's email. And there's a machine that we can have video calls without having mm-hmm. to come here to do a video call. I oh, have, okay. So I've got to like figure Zoom. out how to work the machine and how to pay for it and all that. Okay, so um, what emails do you want me to send? i got a pencil handy. Just yours and Buster's and John's and maybe Brooklyn's and um, um, I got to figure out how it works. Um, okay. So and I I, I was gonna send you a letter too. I sent Buster a letter and Grandma a letter, but I. I don't have much paper, but I'm getting more paper, so I'll send you a letter. You're at the top of my list to send a letter, but I had to send it to Buster, and I hadn't talked to Grandma and him in, you know, five weeks. So I promise you, you and Liza Grace and Mary Marvin are at the top of my list. And your mom sent me a nice letter. Did you know that? Well, that my mom sent one? A very nice letter. She told me that she was going to do that, and um, Sam Griffin texted me last night to say that um, he was FedExing that letter that you gave to him for Buster, and that it should be getting here today. And then he also has saved all the images that were on my computer to Rip Drive, so we'll keep that in a safe spot too. That's a deal. So he's yeah. he's sending all that to me. But um, did Buster tell you? That I'm going to Greenville this weekend? Yeah, he did. Well, um, I mean, I would love to swing by either on Saturday or Monday on, you know, the, the one day or coming back. i got to find you, out. Um, you have to put in, like, a week ahead of time. Don't you have to put in a week ahead of time for visitation? So, like, on, on Friday, all right, on Friday... They'll ask if you got somebody visiting, and you can only visit on Friday or Saturday. Um, so, I promise, Liz, it, it don't go out of your way for a, you know, I mean, it'd be just a phone call where, I mean, you'd be in a whole different place. So, is that still how you have to see Jim, or did they let you now, see him face to face? person visits now, is it? All video. So you would come oh, into a, like the front of the jail, and you would sit down mm-hmm. at a little video telephone thing they have, like you, in these rooms. All right. So like, and I mean, I've had one or two with Jim. Most of them, and my visits have been in person. But every now and then, like on lockdown, they have to do it by telephone. So you sit down at a at a telephone with a little camera, and I'm all the way in where I'm at, and, you know, so you wouldn't get to really visit. We, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And if I can get this video thing set up and figure this out, then, um, you know, but I'll call, I'll talk to you on Friday and see when we get these forms. And, and if I don't have it figured out by then, I just I don't want you going out of your way and not going to be able to set it up for this Friday. I mean, this, this Saturday or Monday. You see what I'm saying? On Friday. Yeah. I'll get a piece of paper where I can set it up for the next Friday. It's Friday or Saturday, right? It's next Friday or Saturday. You see what so I'm saying? So is that just a guard? Yeah. Is that just a guard that stands there next to you that you can ask questions to? No. You got another in? There's somebody in my Come pod. Uh, well, um, what was I going to ask you? I was just on my mind. Everything like Lizzie, will you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. Will you see to it that flowers get out? Yeah, in fact, my mom um, texted me about that this morning. So, because she wanted to send some to Kennedy too. Um, so I need to figure out with Buster where she's going to be, that she can get some. But yeah, I'll definitely. I mean, for Maggie Yeah, yeah. No, I, I know. I know what you want. But yes, I'll um, I'll see to it. Okay. So this is the only time, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but so far in all the calls that we've listened to and that I've listened to, even past this point that he's ever mentioned Maggie or Paul. So, and notice, looking back after the trial, he didn't call him Paw Paw. You know, just a little bit of noteworthy um, material there to kind of keep in mind because, again, by the time we get to trial, he's nicknamed him that um, – other people did call him Paul Paw. I have seen Facebook posts and all that in the past where Paul was tagged and referenced to him as that, but we never heard Alec call him that. Um, so yeah, this is the only time and he's speaking about sending flowers, I'm assuming to the graves. And up until the trial, another thing that we found out is Alex, or I mean, Paul and Maggie's graves don't have headstones. They just have a grave marker. And that was the last I had seen and heard. Um, and also the interview room, Chris McDonough had gone to the graveyard. I believe JLR has as well. Um, but anyways, there was no gravestones. So, you know, with all the money this family has, why is this taking place? Why is he concerned about sending flowers over there, but not realizing that they have no headstones yet? Um it's like he just wants it on record to make it seem like he's caring enough to send flowers there, but it's like he doesn't care enough to realize or figure out, like, wait a minute, we never picked out a headstone for them. Done. And um, and then my mom will handle some for, for Kennedy. All right, I'll call you soon. It ain't no place to be like this. And I'll talk to you soon, okay? Now, this part I love because when they were talking about flowers and he's like, I meant for Paul and Maggie, like, in my opinion, you guys, let me know what you think. He's pretending to be crying on the other end because then he follows it up with this ain't no place to be like this because he knows he's around other inmates, etc., out in public, quote unquote, while he's in jail, um, quote unquote, crying while he's on the phone with his sister-in-law about sending flowers to, you know, the graves. Um but Liz doesn't pick up that he's crying on the other end and she just kind of keeps talking like as if like she's not consoling him. She's not like, oh, we'll get it figured out or anything like that. Um, she just carries on the conversation. I think Alex realizes like, oh, she didn't even know I was like over here faking it. OK, well, um, Love you. I'm excited. I'm excited about that gag order. So the gag order um, took oh, place. Oh, yeah, Jim and Dick told you about that? Uh, this gag order that she's referencing, um, Alex's lawyers filed an emergency motion gag order against Eric Bland um, at this time and pretty much it ends up backfiring. 
And Eric Bland responded and said, Alex Murdoch would have been better served to have filed a motion to gag this his own counsel, who admitted on national television that Murdoch was guilty of the very financial crimes with which he has been charged. So that's what Lizzie is kind of referencing, because obviously the family is experiencing a lot of feedback at this point um, in the media and around the community. No, it's it's already huh? online, but it's already online. Oh, it is. Yeah. No. Right. Um, but it made me happy. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, he, uh, he they tell me he's been running his mouth. Yeah, just ruthlessly. Huh? Ruthlessly. Just. Uh. Just kind of like venom, like he's a snake, spitting out venom every every other word. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll have to see all that and hear all that. Well, there's nothing we can't handle. Love you. Well, I'm excited that you're doing these mountain climbers. Yeah, I man, I'm telling you, I can, I can already tell. I, I've been doing them now for, this is like my 11th. Day. I started on a Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So this is my third, twelfth day. This is my twelfth day. Well, I, mean, um, I can already tell a difference in my legs for sure. I'm not, I've got to, I've got to start doing more on my arms because you know you eat all this junk food because the food's so bad. And, you know, I mean, the food's terrible. And so you eat this junk food, you know, well, it doesn't, um, take, doesn't take long. Hey, and tell well, me, I'm going to call, call him um, some things we got to figure out. And um, I appreciate everything you doing, Lizzie, more than you know. Make, make Buster show you the letter. I mean, it. You know? Oh, the one you, you mailed him? Yeah. Okay. All right, I will. I'm and sure uh, we'll probably be getting them the next little bit. It, They're um, usually here. I mean, you know, every one of these phone calls is recorded, and you know that, you know that, um, they're listening to them. Yeah. Well, I knew that they were recorded. I didn't know if they really cared to listen to. I promise, talk you about. Listen, promise you they're listening to mine. Well, uh, I right. can just I know that we, we... I appreciate we everything, and you give the kids big hugs for me. I'm going to try. All right, so y'all are going to be at Greenfield on Thursday? Yes. So yes. is that where everybody's coming to y'all's place? Um, no, we're going to go to Elm's house at 1 o'clock for, um, dinner. And, so Buster's um, not going to be there. Right, he's going to be in Charleston, but then he's spending Thursday night with us. And then there's that quail hunt on Friday that your mom is going to do well, at Greenfield. That sounds fun. But, you know, I've been doing a lot of thinking and, you know, just about... All oh, taking all these pills and how that all started and you know just I mean there's no doubt when I started taking them that I you know what I'll wait till I get out and tell you all this there's things I remember now that you know that I mean this just goes back 20 years no this goes yeah. back this goes back 23 years but. I know Maggie told you she had a real hard time when we moved to Hampton. Yeah. And why? Yeah, I know what you're trying to say. So for those who have listened to this part of the call um, prior, what are, what are they getting at in this phone call, like at this point, when she's saying, he's saying like, um, I know she told you about things that took place when we moved here or something. Like, what What exactly do you guys know? And that was on replay. Let me know your thoughts. She 
generating some bitter damn feelings. No, oh, and you, you, that's that's understandable, and it's um, it's it's just part part of it to work work through it. I mean, I have the same feeling, so don't think that it's exclusively you. Um, I mean, I we'll a, talk about it. Hopefully, when I get out of here, and so hopefully, hopefully, if things go right, I'll get out of here, and then. I'll go get some more treatment, and then I'll get out for a little while before I have to go deal with everything. So we'll talk. I love you more than you'll ever know. Well, I love you so much, and um, I'm going to finish my workout with some mountain climbers in your honor. <laughs> Thank you for putting flowers out for me. Yes, I'll definitely get that done um, probably tomorrow or the next day. So I'm just wondering, like, is are they referencing um, the rumor or whatever that Maggie just felt like after the boat crash, the town treated her badly? Is that what they were talking about? I'm just, like, confused by that right there. But she said she's going to do mountain climbers in his honor. It's just, like, so strange the way they really, like, worship Alex. And you can just hear it. And, like, they'll bend over backwards for him. So I just... I hope we can get some more calls since his sentencing, but I'm just not certain. And Sarah says she thinks so. Okay. Yeah, I feel like it was kind of referencing something about um, Maggie not liking being there and was treated poorly after the boat crash. So maybe they're just kind of getting at that. Chopper says, I want to know if Maggie was really going to divorce Alex. I believe she was. I know that there's no concrete proof and that there is hearsay about that. But I honestly believe that that definitely could be true. And that may have been the motive, perhaps, you know, just he had no use for her anymore. And, you know, that this way he could inherit because now we know that Moselle property, which just sold for around four million, was all in Maggie's name. You know, Alex would have nothing, uh, no rights to it had she divorced him. When I hit that way. All right. Well, that sounds real good. And I sure, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. You have one minute mm -hmm. remaining. We've taken up the whole call. It must be, what, you get 15 minutes? So, all right. I love you. All right. It was 15 minutes. It's my best part of my day. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Love you. Love you. Okay. This is something else I've been wondering. He said that you were going to went blind. Say again? When you got shot, he said that you, were, you went blind. I don't know for how long. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I couldn't see for, I don't know, I guess a minute, minute and a half maybe, two yeah. minutes, a minute. Yeah. I mean, do you feel like you were near death and that you were seeing the light? No. No, it Are wasn't you... that bad. It just, I guess it was the impact. I mean, it, I wasn't seeing light. I was seeing dark, uh -huh. you know? I mean, the first thing, you know, I mean, the first thing I thought was... You have one minute remaining. And then I'm like, I know I'm not dead because, you know, I mean, I just... I mean, I remember touching my head, and I remember, I mean, I remember thinking the back of my head's blown off, and I'm going to be blind, and then, you know, it slowly started coming back. I could stand up, because it knocked me down, mm -hmm. and then I could stand up. I knew I was standing up, and, you know, then I, I, I think I kind of went to one knee, and, you know, I couldn't see, and I was trying to, but it didn't take, it didn't take long at all before it started improving. I lost you. Well, I had to um, add, add time on my card, on my phone. I got you. So where did you lose me? Um, you were saying that um, that you had uh, gone down to a knee, and, but everything was black. Yeah, and you so like, you could I, mean, feel... just, I couldn't see. I mean, now, for a second, I thought to myself, you know, am I dead? It didn't take me long to realize I wasn't dead. Then the next thing that, that occurred is, oh, my God, I'm really going to be messed up. I'm going to be blind. 
you know, and then it started quickly coming back. But I mean, I mean, I I could reach back and feel my head, and I knew my head wasn't missing. You know, I mean, I could yeah. tell it was bleeding, but I could tell like it wasn't like a big section of my head blown off. It, you know, it never hit my brain. You know that, right? Um. So here's well, what really actually, happened. I guess I thought I thought that it did hit your brain because. No, listen here. All right, so you know how fast a bullet comes out of a gun, right? Yeah. And knowing everything that we know now, after the trial, after seeing some crime scene. Um, simulations and all that, everything that everyone, even in the true crime community and other channels have kind of pulled out from uh, stuff we learned in the autopsy and at the crime scene and in the body cam footage, everything that we know suggests a very gruesome scene, especially for Paul, you know, with the brain outside next to him on the pavement there. I mean, and the way that Alex speaks about how a bullet travels out of a gun here literally makes my stomach turn. Because he's seen exactly what happened to his son and wife. And the way that he's discussing this right now with his sister-in-law about, even though he's speaking about the um, roadside incident, I'm just going to call it. um, I just can't help but think that even though he's speaking about the other, like the self-inflicted gunshot, um, I'm... I can't help but think that he's actually visualizing the other shot that took place or um, bullets that took place. And just him talking about um, the way a bullet travels out of a gun, like it's nothing, you know, if he was an innocent man and he didn't commit these crimes, the conversation to me would sound totally different, but he's been convicted. I feel like um, the jury and a lot of people just feel like, him being at the kennels in that video solidified it. And now knowing that it's only a couple months after that all took place and he's speaking about this right now, just kind of very casually, it's just very, makes my skin crawl. All right, so it hits my head. It goes into my skin and puts a hole and kind of goes around my skull and comes out an inch and a half, two inches further away. So I had an entry and an exit wound, but it didn't go, it didn't penetrate my skull. It it, it cracked it a little bit, and the force caused me to have two brain bleeds. But, you know, all a brain bleed is is a bruise on the brain. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't think it was anything permanent. I don't feel dumber or hindered or anything like that. But no, this wasn't like, okay, things go dark and I see the light and I'm going to the light. It went dark and I couldn't see shit. And then it started lightening up and I could see things around me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, no, but... I think it was just the impact from the force of the bullet that knocked me down and probably, I don't know, I guess sight is somewhere back there, and it it interrupted it for a little while. Hmm. Uh, well, well, I tell you all the details when I see you. I know, I think I feel like we really haven't been with you since then. You haven't. I, I mean, I saw you one time on the side of the road. Yeah. When I was sick as hell. I'm sorry because I was yelling at you. No, you were? No. You were yelling at me? Yes. What? What were you yelling at me? Well, I just wanted answers. I didn't understand what was going on. Because, you know, Christy was the one that told me everything, and I didn't believe her. So she's speaking about the opioid addiction and everything that just came out um, when all these events were taking place, the roadside incident, et cetera. And now they find out, you know, he's got this addiction and his family here, his sister-in-law is just explaining that in um, 
when they were together, you know, she just was in disbelief. She couldn't believe it, believe it. And she says, I just wanted answers. So at, at one point, Liz is yelling at Alex and Alex is too sick going through withdrawals, allegedly, and um, can't remember exactly what she's speaking on right here. Um, and also the fact that we end up remember on the stand, his brother, John Marvin is speaking about how sick Alex was when he was on his way to detox. And he's like, and I'm not talking about diarrhea in the restroom. This was in his pants or something like that. And it was just like, remember on the stand, it was almost like they had told John Marvin to like amp up how sick he was going through withdrawal and like to really solidify that this addiction was real. And it just like came out of nowhere that he was speaking about like um, Alex's bowel movements that day. And it was just like so random on the stand. It was like a little overkill. It was like, okay, like we get it. Um, so now we're hearing from John Marvin's wife that, you know, he was so sick that day and she just couldn't believe it. That's what's so crazy is like, a lot of people didn't even think this is addiction was real. And clearly his family um, was blindsided by it. I got you. Um, and I think I just was. I don't, I mean, I remember, I remember you and I, I, I remember you and Buster. I remember we were on the side of the road somewhere, but that's all I remember. Yeah, we were, um, I think, I think we were in Pooler maybe. See, I don't have um, any clue. Like, when you're in detox, you don't remember anything. I mean, you remember stuff, but you don't remember, like, details. Yeah. And, I mean, I was well into the throes of withdrawals at that point. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew that you didn't, didn't, you know, I mean, you, I guess you just called, called it feeling similar to the flu. I don't remember you yelling at me. I mean, I didn't yell, but I mean, I was just like, I, understand. I just was so confused, and sure, it it just kind of came as, you know, it was just such a shock. I know a lot of emotion. And, I get it. And um, you know, I just I, I didn't know how much Maggie knew, and why she never told me. Not that it's really in my business, but. And we just kind of talked all the time. Right. Um, but. Well, we'll talk about it. Well. I'll I'll be in touch tomorrow and let y'all know what's going on. Yeah, keep us posted and um, if there's something I can do. That much you just got. Oh God, you know how much I appreciate you, and I will talk to you soon. Okay, I love you. Either way, I love you. Tell everybody hello, give them all hugs, and tell them I hope um, I see them soon, but if not, I'll see them when I can. Well, I'm putting you on speakerphone because Rada Grace wants to say hey. Okay. Do you have a second? Yes. Okay. Hi. Hey, baby doll. Hi. I heard you were in the Christmas parade. Yeah. Man, I wish I could have seen that. Did you get tired walking or did you ride? I had to walk. Huh. Was it a long way? Yeah. Well, I bet you were the best one in the whole parade. <laughs> they say the last. The best for last. He was at the very end. You were? Well, that is the best for last. I bet you were the very best. Mm -hmm. What's Randolph doing? Is he being bad? Probably. Probably. You're right. Probably is no doubt. Well, I hope I get to see you soon. I love the letter that you sent me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you one soon if I don't get out, okay? If I don't come okay. home. Guess what? Guess where Randolph is in the bed? He's in the bed. Oh, now I'm hearing all the He's in the he's bed? Been yeah, he's been awake since 2 a.m. He had a little friend from the night last night, and those two little things got up at 2 a.m. and started playing and never went back to sleep. Are you serious? I am dead serious because I then was up at 4 because I could hear him. 
and then I woke up at six. Uh, you so, can't sleep. You can't sleep when they're up like that. No, and I was paranoid that they were going to go outside. And especially when he's got a friend. Yeah, that I'm responsible for. All right. Well, y'all take care. Tell everybody hello. I miss you, Liza Grace. I miss you. I'll be looking forward to seeing you sometime soon, I hope. Okay, yes, sir. She's shaking her head. All right. Love y'all. Talk to you soon. Okay, love you too. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm with a small group for the most part. You know, 70%, 75% of the time, I'm with these same five guys. And then there's, there's another guy that's on our thing, but he he doesn't even come out when he's just kind of weird. He doesn't come out, but anyway, you know, I mean, we play chess and play cards and we have... Well, at least you got got somebody to interact with a little bit now. I was yeah. worried about you when you were completely by yourself. Uh, and I tell you this, I've been really exercising That's hard. Right. Once I made it, once I... I didn't do crap while I thought I was getting out quickly. And then, you know, yeah. and I, mean, I can yeah. really tell the difference. Like today, yeah. we didn't we didn't get out. They had people working in here, so they wouldn't let us out mm-hmm. early. I mean, I, I exercised for two hours and 40 minutes. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. I, can, I can tell the difference, too. I'm, I'm trying to make the best out of it. I'm really trying to yeah. exercise hard. And, um, you know, yeah. I, I, I do it. I quit. It, it bugged the shit out of me to start with, but I started looking at it as, you know what? Every day I do now is one less day. One less you have to do on the tail end of it. You are absolutely right. And just got to keep that attitude, but um, it, I know it's tough. I can't imagine. Can't imagine. Hey, Libby. Hey, Uncle Alec. What you doing? How you doing? We're good. We're uh, just loaded up and headed to the Christmas parade to see Santa. Headed where? To the Christmas parade in downtown Beaufort. Well, that sounds fun. Is John Marvin back with you or is he still at Greenfield? No, nope, he's here and we're pulling out. you want to talk to him? No, I just, I mean, I don't need to talk to him right now. Everybody go okay. on. I sent you a letter, Jim. should have mailed it Friday. Oh, okay, good. Well, we'll be on the lookout. Just a minute. I'm talking to the first friend up wants to talk to you. You know, they record every single one of these things, so. Okay. I'm talking, talk about, and, and I know they listen to all my calls, so. That's why I do well, um, Anyway, so who wants to talk to me? Randall. And we've heard him mention to everybody on the phone that they're listening to his calls. It sounds like at this point he's super paranoid. And remember, he hasn't been charged with the double murders yet. So he's only facing financial crimes at this point. And publicly, that's all that anyone knows about. So, you know, he's just super paranoid about his calls being um, listened to. And when he says, like, they're listening to mine, trust me. It's not because of the financial stuff like his family thinks. You know, he knows that they're listening because of the double murders, in my opinion. All right, let me talk to you. I sent Barry Marvin a letter, too. I only had two pieces of paper. Then I found a third piece. Lynn's been sending me stuff, so I sent Lynn. But Jim brought me a bunch of papers, so I got paper now. So tell okay. I, Grace and Randolph, I'll write them. I said it in the letter. Let me speak to you. Perfect. Okay, hold on. Hi. Hey, buddy. What you doing? You going to see the Christmas parade? I'm doing good. You going to see the Christmas parade? Yes, sir. You tell Santa Claus I said hello, okay? Okay. You know, he and I, I've been knowing him for a long time. Did you know I knew Santa Claus? What? I'm I'm personal friends with Santa Claus. We We eat lunch together a couple times a year. When he leaves the North Pole, we go to lunch together. I'll put in a good word. I'll put in a good word for you, okay? Okay, but what does he like to eat? Oh, he loves chocolate chip cookies. He loves chocolate chips. That's what he eats most of the time. 
So you got to leave him some Christmas night, okay? Okay. All right, well, y'all have fun at the parade, okay? Okay. All right, I love you. I love you, too. What? Um, okay, I got the phone now. Um, John Marvin said he'll call you tomorrow, or he said for you to call him tomorrow. Yeah, I can call him tomorrow. Um, I still, uh, uh, Jim and I had a meeting on Friday, but I still, we still got some things to sort out, so wasn't quite ready to, anyway. Um, y'all doing good? Yeah, well, um, I had a girls' night last night. And, I figured you um, did with them up at Greensville. That's good. Where were the kids? Is that the crazy guy? No, nah, no, nah, that's, that's not, that's, no, that's, 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 Friend's house last night, and they're walking in the parade. He well, take a picture of him. The- take a picture for me. Oh, and then um, then in Brooklyn, and Katie and Randolph all stayed at our house last night. Brooklyn okay. actually went to the party with me for a little while, but she so didn't want Brooklyn to. Brooklyn stayed with you last night. Well, she went to the party. Spent the night at the party, but she came back to my house. And, um, what party? The kids. It's just this um, party that is called Prads and Pearls, and the same girl hosts it every year. And so you wear your favorite pearls. Your favorite pearls? Necklace. Yeah. So um, she's been doing it for three years now, and it's just cool. Just an excuse to get together. Yeah. Well, that sounds fun. That sounds good. Yeah. Hey, Joe Marvin didn't happen to talk to Jim late Friday, did he? Didn't happen to talk to Jim late Friday. Jim came to see me about three o'clock. He said no. Okay. Anyway, I got to get to him. I told Jim to tell John Marvin, but I'll I'll um I'll tell you when I get out. They seem to think I'm going to get out before Christmas, but like I say, I don't get my hopes up, you know? Well, that would be great news. So, we'll see. They say that the Supreme Court's last week is this coming week, and they act like they seem to think they're going to do something. Uh huh. We'll see. We'll see. All right, y'all go yeah. have fun at the Christmas parade. Tell Mary Marvin I put a letter in there for her, and um, I, I just got Jim to put them together, though, okay? Well, and I sent you one on Monday. Have you gotten that one yet? Um, no. Okay. The last one I got one. is the one you were sitting at the park with Randolph. Okay, yeah, no, I've got another one that I wrote on Thanksgiving Day. And it, um... It I'll has probably get it tomorrow. It, I'm sure it got held up for Thanksgiving. I'm sure it didn't get here until yeah. Monday or Tuesday and... They were on lockdown and on lockdown this weekend, and I'm sure I'll get it tomorrow. Why do they keep doing these lockdowns? Uh, I think because they're understaffed, you know. Uh, understaffed and like, sense. you know, fights and shit go on and. Well, like, are most people just there for like a week or so? Like it's kind of a temporary place. Not, not, not where I am. No. Oh, they're not. No. I don't know why I was getting that impression that it was just a like a well, holding. They have place. a spot that's a county. You know, I'm sure they have like DUIs come in and go out the next day or you know some little something mm-hmm. and bond it out. But where I'm at, most of the people are you know here for. I don't know. I don't really get into nobody's personal business, you know? Well, um... Nobody about my personal business. Are you still in the spot where you're not really with the general, like, the most of the people? No, like, I'm, are I'm you not still in the medical more. world? I mean, I, I'm... But I'm not, like, in the... You know, I mean, I'm probably 60... 60... In, in, in my pod, 55 people, maybe. 
Now, in my okay. pod, there's only seven people, but the, there's there's eight pods, and they open out into, you know, a general area, and there's probably 50, I don't know, 50. So in that pod, are, are they is their bed in the same room as yours? In, is what now? Are you, like, in the pod, is it, so there's seven people, are y'all, like, all y'all's beds are together, or you have a separate room for that? Nah, it's separate. It's, it's all separate. I gotcha. Do you no. still have your colorful shoes? What? Do you still have your colorful shoes? I still got them. I get offers every day, I'm telling you. Every day. <laughs> My buddy. My buddy, the one-legged trustee named Clarence, I don't know if I told you about him, but I know I wrote about him to you. Have I told you about him? No. Well, he's a one-legged trustee. He goes around and, you know, does everything that, you know, for the guards and all, running back and forth to each pod. He's in a wheelchair. He pulls himself with his one leg. He says, you know, if if, if you give me them, I just need one of those shoes. You, you only <laughs> want one. Uh, That's anyway. hilarious. Well, he's, he's now, what real, does trustee mean? Trustee like means, he's, you he's know, gonna... he's, he's like the guard's little pet, for lack of a better. He's the one the guards, you know, that, that does everything. He's been here like three and a half years, and he does all the running around. He helps give out meals, and like if it's on lockdown, he gives out meals, and he just helps. He cleans up. He mops. He sweeps. He's the guy who helps me get the books. You know, I'll tell you everything else. He does a lot for me. I'll tell you when we get out. Well, um, were you ever able to get, I know they said that you couldn't have the book that I sent you, but I told the lady to put it in the library. Well, I still haven't gotten to the library, but I did ask the other day to speak to this Miss Wanamaker. Okay, good. Um you know, I went by there um, on Monday. Went by on where? On my way home. Where you are. Oh, you did? Um, yeah, because I've become friends with Jackie, the mail clerk. Oh, really? And so I, I brought her a poinsettia on Monday. Well, that was nice. And I wrote her a little letter. But um, uh-huh. I, knew, I knew not to ask for you. I mean, I didn't want to put you in a bind, so I didn't. we didn't even really talk about you. I was just... It wouldn't put me in a bind at all. I appreciate well, everything you're doing. And tell John I'll call him tomorrow, okay? Okay, well, be on the lookout for, um, I'll be on the lookout for your letter, and um, I'll tell Mary and Marvin. tell Mary Marvin. Um, um, tell Liza Grayson Randolph. I'll send them some more something as soon as I get some paper, and i got to write your mom. Okay. Jim just gave me well, paper Friday great. afternoon. Um, John Marvin wants to know how much money you have left on your campaign. Oh, you know what? I need um, I need sixty dollars. Okay, well we'll restock it tonight. And I don't have, I can do it in the morning. Okay. Make okay. the deadlines like noon tomorrow. Okay. All right, love y'all. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Have fun. Bye bye. Okay, bye. we will. Yeah, having a good day. I've been spending so much money on it, and it hurts me. On what? People's Christmas presents. Huh? Well, I mean, I gotta buy a present for everybody. Well, and it's a lot of people. I'll tell you this, bus. What? Hang on. <clears throat> Hello. People, something that was mom or Paul's. And I think people really like that. Well, I mean, I, I wasn't gonna do. Oh, you're gonna do that? We'll see if I if I get out of here, which, uh, like I say, I'm not optimistic, but um, we'll see. We'll see. They seem to be optimistic, but they were optimistic the first time too. Right. Anyway. Well, I mean, I've already I've already bought everybody something, so. Well, we'll talk about finances when I get out of here. But it's crazy to hear somebody with as much money as they do. Buster's complaining about having to buy Christmas presents for everybody. I'm going to make sure you're okay. Well, I mean, I, I make money. I know. And if I don't if I don't go back in the spring, then I'll continue to make 
more effectively. I know. Talking about anyway, we'll 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 get all that square. Talk to you when we're not on this phone being recorded. And also, Buster doesn't have to buy Paul or his mother something this Christmas, and he's still complaining. I'm just so confused. Okay. Did you talk to Blanca? Um, no. Now, remember, Blanca is their housekeeper, the one that found um, Alex's pants on the bathroom floor, the puddle of water next to the shower, and all the white T-shirts knocked over. All of this was found by her the day after the murders when Alex called her and said, I need you to head over to the house and clean, please. Okay. All right. What, will you, I, what am I supposed to tell her again? Just tell her that I want that, to that give her a call and, and explain to her what she has to do and if that's okay with her. What is, uh, yeah, with the account? Good point, Foxy Lady. She says, meanwhile, at the casino, yeah, they went to Las Vegas two months prior, and now Christmas time is coming around and Buster's complaining that he's got to buy all these presents. Uh, and he, Sarah asks, why is he asking about Blanca? He's in desperate need of getting a hold of Blanca. In our last live stream, we heard a phone call between Alex and Buster, and he pretty much says the same thing. Like, can you get a hold of Blanca for me? I need to speak with her. And he says, uh, if you can't handle it, Buster, I know you got a lot going on. I'll get someone else to do it. So, like, he's very much needing to get a hold of Blanca. But at the same time, you know, time has passed since the last time he's asked Buster if he's gotten a hold of her. And so, to me, it makes it seem like he doesn't want it so much emphasized in a recorded phone call that he needs to get a hold of Blanca. But within these phone calls that we've heard in compilation, he's asked more than once. And it seems as though there's something that he needs to be um, speaking with her about. Yeah. And will you do that today? I'd like to call her over the holidays. Yeah, I'll do that today. Now, me and Blanca ain't been, been rubbing on the same cylinder. What? I said me and Blanca... Well, I've, got some serious, I've got some serious problems with the way Blanca's done some things. Like what? You know, man, I went out to Moselle the other day. She didn't tell anybody. I mean, she's packed up everything at Moselle. I don't know where anything is, so I can't find anything that I want. You know, and, and she doesn't, you know, she calls Grandma and looks for permission to go out there and take Mom's clothes with her and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what, Grandma, you need to tell her. She needs to call me. And now, remember, come to find out, Blanca was selling a bunch of um, Maggie's clothing on Poshmark. And I actually went to the Poshmark, and the count is called BS, uh, BX Simpson. So in case you have a Poshmark, you can go on there. She, she sold one of Maggie's Louis Vuitton purses for 1700 um, so I can kind of see why Buster is a little like irritated, you know, like all his mother's stuff is being sold from right out from underneath him pretty much. Um, and I believe just like John Marvin and Buster were told to get rid of things before things were uh, collected. I believe that Alec probably suggested to Blanca that she get rid of some things and liquidate as well. But again, that's just my speculation. Yeah, she's just trying to help. Don't remember that. But just tell And for anyone who's ever lost somebody, you know, if somebody sells your loved one who has passed, like, items, like, you'd be very, like, annoyed, you know? Like, for me, at least, like, if that was my mother's things, I'd be like, are you kidding me? Like, I would flip, you know? Like, that's just very personal. Like, you want to hold on to or at least part with it in your time and, and in your manner. And all Alex says to him after he's pretty much said, like, we're not firing under the same cylinder or on the same cylinder, whatever he said, and expressed his, um, you know, irritation with Blanca. All Alex says is, well, she's just trying to help. And it's like, really? Like, can you not just at least say something in, in comfort or, you know, uh, make Buster feel like he's being heard and understood? So that's what leads me to think that uh, Alex and Blanca have some sort of there's some secrets being told there, I believe, between them two for him to have her back this way. You know, when his own son is kind of expressing something that he's just very upset about. 
Um, Caroline says Blanca presents a threat to Alec guaranteed. And remember, she testified um, in the trial. So that hasn't taken place at the time of this phone call. So I think at this point, you know, Alex wants to tread lightly with Blanca. So he'll stick up for her. Tell her. I mean, tell Blanca to call you. She's just trying to help. Everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. Have you talked back to Butch? Uh, yeah, I talked to Butch on Monday, and he said that he's, you know, working to get in touch with Hubbard. So remember, we spoke about it in the beginning of the stream, but for those who joined us now, Butch is the attorney that Alec Murdoch knows, um, who knows the college dean, who is the Hubbard guy. And they're trying to get Buster back in, even though he was kicked out from plagiari plagiarism um, scandal. So that's what this is kind of referencing. I mean, shit, you know, you're two weeks out. Well, I mean, I'm just going to, you know, I mean, I told Bush, I was like, well, look, man, it's not like exactly I can be told on the 31st that I go to school on the 5th. And he's like, I understand. And he, he seems to think due to the delay that that the, the you know, situation is going to work out. Yeah. I mean, because I'll, I'll just tell him, be like, look, man, you fucked this all up. I can't come to school with four days notice. Uh, I know, but you can't tell him quite like that. Well, I mean, no, you can't. You can't tell him. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I understand you need to be on the good side, but. Push comes to shove, I've got a, a letter that says I've been accepted, and they don't want that PR going out there. Um, I mean, i got valid, you know, hard copy proof. No, I know. I know. And um, <laughs> there was something. I, I will tell you this. I think Butch is good at I think he's as good as anybody at this. But, you know, I I, I, I knew people would talk. Um. But, you know, I, I, I'm i way past worrying about what people that don't matter say. You know, there's so many people who yeah. they don't have a freaking clue. Well, it's easier for you. You don't run into these people in public. Which people? Any people that have a negative outlook on this thing. Well, do you know who they are? I mean, nah, man. But, I mean, I get stopped and yelled at all the time. I got cussed out in the gas station the other day. You kidding? Nah. So what? Being who I am, I guess. Who who was it? Man, so I'm thinking, but I don't know who he is. Some redneck fellow. And what did he say? He just started making a ruckus in the gas station, yelling at me, talking about WTS. He's looking for me, and you know, called me a piece of sh and just stuff like that. Just crazy stuff. I'm sorry, as I can be. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't really talk. I don't really talk to him. I just kind of escape the situation. WTOC. I mean, what? he know about WTOC? I uh, mean, apparently he said he saw something on the news where they said that people are looking for me or someone's, I don't, I don't know what he said. I mean, it's not like I sat there and asked any questions. I mean, I understand that you've done illegal, but that doesn't mean you can just, you know, turn a cold shoulder to the laws of the United States. I'm allegedly done illegal stuff. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, um, So, but it, it is what it is, you know. It is what it is. Well, and, and I really I could give a flying shit less what anybody who doesn't know. So now he's speaking again to his sister-in-law, Liz. And thank you so much, Pizza Chemist, for the super chat. And good morning. Hello. How are you? And yes, I agree, Sarah. Um, she said he offers Buster no emotion. Me or us says, but it, 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 you know, I quit listening to it when they started printing all that false shit about the boat wreck or, you know, yeah. 
handpicking what they print, only printing negative stuff without putting it in context with other stuff that, you know, taking a snippet that when you look at it in its totality, there's nothing to it. But if you take a little blurb, you know, it sounds bad in the media. I mean, they do that right. all the time. But anyway, it, the only thing that worries me about it. And I do think that there has been some things about the boat wreck that were only picked in shoes like they don't the media only showed a small portion of like the whole story and i know that from reading parts of the deposition with um the lawsuit from connor's family and apparently you know through that we all end up finding out that the bar slash restaurant that they went to the oyster roast um and i think there's another place that they went to as well. But anyways, uh, Miley, who was one of the girls and, and friends of Paul that were there, um, her parents were there. So while they were all drinking, using underage IDs, et cetera, and one of the IDs, not only was it not him or the person, but it was like a fake one. Whereas, you know, uh, Paul was using Buster's ID that night, which was a real ID, but it wasn't him. Either way, you know, parents, I end up finding it, come to find out parents were also like, seen at the same places that the kids were you know so i do think that there is a, a, a portion of the media that only showed like a small story about um well not the whole story you know they definitely sh told a lot and a lot of it was true and i definitely am not saying like anything about it not being true in the media about what they shared about the boat wreck but i am saying that there's a lot that people don't know still and that is still being like uncovered through these court documents that are coming out. It is. You know, I know it's hard for y'all, you know, and I know it's hard for Grandma and Papa T and yeah. me and Bart. And, 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 and it worries me a little bit for Buster. I'm just I'm not sure he quite knows how to deal with it yet. Well, MK says, does he ever say I miss Maggie or Paul on any of these phone calls? No, I've never heard him say I miss them. I think about them or I wish they were here or they would like this or they'd be thinking that, you know, it's only the only time that they're brought up is about the, um, flowers being sent to them, their gravesite. And remember, we all know that the tombstones, I don't even know if they're there yet. So they they have a grave, but no tombstones. I don't really ask him, but I feel like he doesn't read it that much. Um, no, he told me to block most of the stuff, but, you yeah. know, he's still, I think, you know, I worry to death about Grandma and Papa T because I, you know. And Grandma and Papa T are Maggie's parents. And another thing to note, too, is he never once calls Paul Papa. Well, um... Yeah, I do think Marion's told me that they they read it, but um, I think they only read the top Post and Courier, so um, that's good that they don't read, you know, the more tabloidy kind of one. He was supposed to give you a call. You sure you don't have a missed call? Yeah, but I mean, I ain't got much service out here. Oh, you're back at Chief Jesse. Well, you need to try to call him, but he said that Hubbard's been out of the country. He just got back, he just talked to him, and that they have met, and that they have decided that they're going to delay your admission. Now, I'm not sure they, I mean, I'm not sure what they can do that, but I'm not sure what you, we can do about it. You know, I mean, I mean if you fight it and win, they, they say it's not in your best interest to start law school this semester. It didn't want to. And it's unfair for you to start in the fall. So now pay attention here. Um, he's been told that he's not, they're not ready to take Buster back to law school yet, but they're thinking fall time they will. And Buster says more than once that he wasn't ready to go back to law school anyways. So, but Alex doesn't hear it. He just keeps saying, um, but I can try to get you in in spring or I can, you know, he's trying to get his connections to get him in 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 spring and he's like no I don't want to and he's like are you sure and it's just like 
another example of just how pushy and like, um, it's just crazy to think the, the way that they explain Alex in the trial is, you know, when he's, when he worked for his law firm, he very much swindled and, and was good at kind of settling with, um, people during their suits and all that. And you can just tell that he's very persuasive. He won't take no for an answer. And it's, it's evident even in his parenting with his son who just wants a little bit of time out after losing his mother and his brother, the way that, that he has. And the law school is pretty much saying like, no, we're not ready to have you back. And he's cool with it. But Alex is not hearing it. He just is like pushing more and more and he doesn't listen. Laying you to the spring next year. But I mean, this just got sprung on Butch and Jim and trying to figure out what we can do to get you started in the fall. All right. So you weren't planning on starting in the spring anyway. I didn't want to. All right. Well, try to call Butch. He can give you a few more details. Um, I mean, Buster, I, I, I don't even know what to say, man. I'm just sorry. But they seem to think that they can negotiate you starting in the fall, but maybe as an audit or something like that, just to get you, back, know, just to get you back in the swing of things. Hello. I'm here. All right. Caroline, thank you so much. I'm glad you like the editing. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And Brenda said, yep, and still no questions about the killer. Any leads, suspects, etc. No anger or concern for the living son unless I missed it because I'm sure. Um, and yeah, it's just we don't hear it. We don't hear it. Um, but thank you again so much, um, Caroline. I appreciate you and your support and your compliments. And yeah, let's hear this, guys. It's almost done. And then we'll do the update from Buster, his statement. I've shared it to my community post. I'll share the community post with you guys and read it out loud. Are, are your friends there yet? Yeah, we're going to make them here. So, you know, I'm not, would you rather talk about this when they're not around? No, I mean, it's fine. I just don't know what, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how they revoke an admission. But here's the thing. Do you want to pressure them for you to start this spring in five days? No. Without a doubt? Yes. Because I think you might can do that. Now, I'm not sure that's in your best interest because if you force them to let you come I'm down. I'm not, I'm not mentally not mentally prepared. I'm not ready to go now. And then they they fucked know, all that up for me. What now? What would you say? I said I'm... Bus? Hello? Yeah. Hey, what? What'd you say? I said, now I'm not mentally prepared for that, and they've, they've messed that all up now. I don't want to do that anymore. Hello? I'm here. I know you're frustrated, and I mean, I feel like it's all my fault. I know it's my fault. No, not entirely. I share some blame in this. No, I mean, I'll let you go. Go try to have a good weekend. That's fine. I'll get in touch with him after the week. He's going to call you, so try to look for a call. All right. All right. I love you. Love you too. Bye. Sorry, this is happening. What Buster told me was they were they thought they were go offering to start in the spring. I mean, in the fall. Well, that's what we've been trying to do. So this is Randy or John Marvin, I believe. I don't know why I must have put Buster still, but on the screen it says Buster, but it's John Marvin or Randy. We'll find out as I listen more. But now it's gotten down to the last minute. They haven't done anything. Buster's not prepared to go. It's probably not in his best interest to go anyway. But if he fights their decision, what they're saying is they're going to delay him until the following spring. Right. And now Butch and Jim are going to try to negotiate him doing something in the fall, but, you know, he ain't going to have any leverage. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be right. what they say. It's just a shitty thing, and I mean, all this is because of me. Well, what can I do to help? Is it anything? Do I need to communicate with Jim, Butch? I mean, is there... Yeah, this is John Marvin. Is there anything you can do? I mean, let's just say he could he could force them to honor the 
division. The originally, and go this this coming semester. Yeah, I mean, with all this pressure on him, and that's going to piss off the administration, and, you know, they're going to grade him extra hard. I mean, who knows what might happen. Right now, it's either spring next year, or we do something to fight their decision. They're saying, okay, we're delaying his admission one year. It's in his best interest. It's in our best interest and we're delaying him one year. We thought about the fall, but it's not fair to the other students for him to get to come in and start over. Right. So, now, hopefully we can work something out maybe where he audits classes. You know what audit class is. You go to the class, but the grade doesn't count. No, I didn't know that. But And that way maybe he could get back in the swing of it in the fall and do, you know, go to school, get back in the swing of it, redo those classes that he did poorly in, even though it wouldn't change his grade, it would change his knowledge base and make it better for him starting the second semester maybe. Right. But the bottom line is the only choice right now is on a Friday, New Year's Eve, classes start on Wednesday. So somehow Friday, New Year's Eve, get prepared to Monday, file something, Get a court to get a court to enjoin the law school from denying his admission that they've given him, which I don't even know if you can do, and I don't know that that's in his best interest. They're leaving. I'm not gonna bother you. You can have some quiet time, but I need y'all to put. I need one more time y'all to put um, canteen on Lucas on Justin Lucas's account. Okay. What's going on? What? What's, I mean, what's going on with... It allows me to get get stuff that I need. We can only get you. $60. And he doesn't get canteen, so I give him some money in return for using his account. I gotcha. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. And keep track of it, okay? Okay. All right. I will. How soon will you be able to do it? Um... Um, uh, give me, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes or so. Okay. All right. You sure you don't mind? Well, no. It's, it's all good. Hey, John, is Lizzie nearby? She is. She, I talked to her earlier. She was going to put some money on that account for me, and she didn't. Okay. Well, then what is it? This is, this is where, she knows what to do. The boy's name is Justin Lucas. Okay. And what, what, what is it, though? It's putting, it's putting money on, he doesn't get canteen, so I give him some of the money, and he orders canteen. So I, I'm having okay, to order what? thermals and all that. I'm having to order ibuprofen because I'm exercising, and my knee and my shoulder, and hell, ibuprofen's $15 on there to get a week's supply. I got you. So it gives me extra canteen. I got you. And he doesn't get one? No, he doesn't. He doesn't get any. So she put it on his account. We just did it one time. We did it last week, and I'm gonna do it one more time. Okay. But I need her to do it right now. All right. And what's the amount? Sixty dollars. Okay. And she's supposed to be keeping the track of all this, so I can make sure and pay you back. Ten four. Well, I'll get her. She's putting the kids down right now. Putting Randolph down. What about Grace? How long do you think she'll be? Four or five minutes. Okay, because we have like, I don't know, we have like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. All right, well, Jim and Dick are working hard, so. What are they, what are they working on? I mean, are, are all, have all the charges been dealt for them? See, that's what I don't know. I, I don't know that yet. I don't know. I suspect that if they do it like they've done everything else, They'll sit and wait till something else comes up and then do some more charges. Right. But I don't know. I okay. don't know. Did you, have you talked to Randy since last week? Yeah, I talked to him um, I talked to him yesterday. Yeah, you know about the law firm, don't you? No. Yeah, the law firm is, has dissolved, and they're reforming under a new name. I didn't know nothing about that. What is that? 
Yes, because of all the negative publicity and all the stuff they're going through. What is the new name? Um, they operate under the... What? The law of this. It's going to be operated under the Parker Law Group. The what? Parker Law Group. Central. And then I think each one of them kind of opens up an LLC partnership or LLP in each each partner's name and operates under the, the Parker Law Group heading. I hate they having to go through all that. Yeah, but they, they catch them and they go on through all kinds of stuff. Is there anything I can help with? Nah, man. You know, I suspect when the time is right and the things that, that you acknowledge, uh, I think opening up about it to the general public. That's why there's a lot of people that just think that you kind of trust everything. You know, I mean, obviously, Corey's been fired. I mean, you knew about that, did you? Been what? Corey has been fired. Legitimately, he, for real, or just? I, I understand he's, they, they've removed the name from the law firm, removed the name from the sign out front, and he's not working. I knew he had some issues with the license, but no, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's permanent or if it's just a temporary deal, or I'm not, I, I don't know, but I, I suspect that it's more permanent. I just think that the, talk to Jim and Dick, and, and I think that, that you talking, talking about certain things is going, is going to come, you know, coming back and talking about it is going to make a difference. It's got to. I mean, that's the only thing that can make a difference, I think. What do you mean talking about what? You know, if, if you've been charged with something that you that you did, acknowledging and accepting it and, and making clear who didn't do anything. So but obviously only the only if there's something. something. Oh, there's people saying that the law firm's done all kinds of stuff. There's, there's people saying, Ella, it's, it's amazing what's going on. They're saying that the law firm has done all kinds of stuff. They're saying that Corey, Chad, Russell, Chris, you name it, and, and everybody's implicated. Now, this didn't come from law enforcement, to my knowledge. This is just one world street. I mean, I said, and there's been there's been no talk whatsoever from anybody in an official capacity. So, you know, I, I just think it'll make a difference. In, in, well, in when, I, when I talked to the court the other day, one of the things I said was, you know, my partners didn't know anything, and I said, Chris and Corey. You know, yeah, you know, I, 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 you I, I, no, I very little of that was said because they couldn't report it. There was some of it that was brought back out, but I don't know. It's worth talking to Dick and Jim about to, to see if I don't even know if there's any way to give an official statement. Or, I don't know. That's that, they got to figure all that out of it. But they they don't have the same issues that, that Randy and the firm and everybody else has. They don't what? They aren't having the same issues. Who is it? It's more perception than anything in my, at this point. Who isn't having the same issues? Dick and Jim. I mean, they, you know, they're, they're, they're looking at it from a whole different perspective, you know. They're doing it from a, from a way that they, they manage it. That's, that's just what they do. They know how to manage what they're handling. I need to, I need to sit down with them and figure out what I can do, is what I need to do. Well, it'd be worth a conversation with them to find out, for sure. And it may not matter. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like that's about the only thing left that, you know, I just, and I just don't know the manner to do it. And you only do it if it's something that, that you did or, or, or need to say. I mean, obviously, if it's something that you weren't involved with, you can certainly say that. Sure. Sure. All right. Thank you for letting me. Anyway, I'll get those right now. Because of me or because of Maggie and Paul? Maggie and Paul. Maggie and Paul in particular. I know all about that. All right. Will you yeah. talk to Lizzie real, real uh, soon? Yeah. I mean, I'll do that right the, now. The dude just told me we got like two minutes, so she's got to do it. All right. I'll do it right she, now. Can she do it right okay. now? Yeah, I'll get her. Listen to this now, John Marvin. you got to remember this name. Justin Lucas. Well, everybody oh, sound good? I'm, uh, I, told, I, I should have told you all, but... I didn't really think about it, but I got flustered when all that shit went on with Buster, and they changed at the last minute on that Friday, but basically all, you know, they were on lockdown.
because people were off, you know, the weekend and beginning of um, all during Christmas and New Year's. I gotcha. What do you mean? You got flustered with Buster with what? Well, law they, they, yeah, in law school. They threw it around and waited till the last minute. And Anyway, I, I think it's probably not in Buster's best interest to go right now, but I was hoping for the fall, but they're still working on it. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, I was dealing with that all day Friday afternoon when I could use the phone, and then we went on lockdown for, I mean, we've been on lockdown a lot, but we went on lockdown for New Year's, and just, I couldn't get to the phone to call. You know, this thing about how rich we are and how powerful we are, and I mean, it's just, I mean, taking a life of its own. I, I, you know, I mean, I wish it was half true. Um, but moving forward, I think that these conversations on this phone should be nothing more than surface level. And if you have something of, you know, um, you talking about that stuff they were saying at the hearing yesterday? Yeah. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm, every single phone call I get on, I know they're listening to it. I mean, well, we just, I just thought, I just kind of thought it was more something that was said and wouldn't exactly be utilized. But I can see that I was wrong. So if there's something of substance you want to talk to me about, just write me a letter and I'll write it back. Well, I mean, all of that stuff is really just taking snippets and. Making it, you know, I mean, that's just advocating uh, as lawyers, which I understand that, but not very much of my life is private. And the more I can keep private, the more I would like to. I understand that totally, for sure. What was on TV Friday, bus? I, I saw John Marvin on there for just a second. Dad, it was some. It was something ABC 2020. I didn't watch it. Well, did it, did it, was it a new interview or was it from that old interview? Um, I would assume if it had him on TV, it had to be the old one. He has not gone on TV since. He hasn't. 10-4. 10-4. All right. Well, I mean, did they, was it the same old stuff with a bunch of innuendo and false stuff or were they being semi-truthful? Dad, I, but I'd love to be able to give you some insight, but I, I didn't watch it and I didn't seek out anything, any transcripts from it. I, I I don't know. I know um, it ain't no big deal. I would assume it's the same old thing. Brooklyn told me some stuff that was on it, and it, it, it was stuff that's, that's, that's wrong. So, I mean, it's just that same old... Um, Stephen Smith and Glory and all that bullshit? Um... You know, I think it probably had to touch on that. I think this is. I think this. I think this one hit maybe a little bit more on the boat wreck. Um, I, gotcha. I just know that there was some stuff that they that Brooklyn said that that was said in in the um, in the little show, and it's just stuff that it, it's just stuff that's not important, but it just shows that if they believe, if they are willing to state that in fact, that they they just don't know what they're saying because it's, it's just stuff that's not true. I understand. So are they still trying to say out there like there's some mystery surrounding Gloria's death about how she died? Saying what now? About how she died. Are they still trying to make some innuendo there? Um, about Gloria? Yeah. I don't know. I, um, are they still trying I, I to think about Stephen Smith, even though Andy Savage? Yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody... connected to us? Yeah, I don't think anybody... Took the Did they ever come out and say there's no connection? No. no they, they were they never. told Andy Savage that? Uh, no. The, the SLED has not released anything. They wouldn't even, they didn't even release a statement about what was this most recent thing. Um, there was something, so, something came out not long ago talking about how there's been like a, a breakthrough in evidence to do with like the homicides and, and SLED wouldn't even come out and issue a statement saying that there has been no further evidence, like, gathered. 10-4. Um, so, personally, I would not count on SLED to, to help in any way. I was just curious. All right, my man, you get some rest, and now, what time are you get on the road tomorrow? Um, about 8, about 8 a.m. All right, I'll give you a call sometime when I can. Buster, what's going on with COVID out there? It must be going crazy. 
It's um, it's this new, it's this new variant. Um, it's Om- it's Omni COVID or whatever. Omicron. It's Omicron. Um, that's the Omicron. Omicron. Whatever. Yeah. All right, let me share Buster's statement, his statement that he has put out today in regards to Stephen Smith rumors and um, the fact, not a rumor, that they are going to exhume his body now. So today he said, I've tried my best to ignore the vicious rumors about my involvement in Stephen Smith's tragic death, death that continue to be published in the media as I grieve over the brutal murders of my mother and brother. I love them so much and miss them terribly. I haven't spoken up until now because I want to live in in private while I cope with their deaths and my father's incarceration. Before, during, and since my father's trial, I have been targeted and harassed by the media and followers of this story. This has gone on far too long. These baseless rumors of my involvement with Stephen and his death are false. I unequivocally deny any involvement in his death and my heart goes out to the Smith family. I am requesting that the media stop publishing these defamatory comments and rumors about me. So that is his statement today. Um, I really have to get going. I appreciate you guys all being here. I'm going to play the two minute edited clips that I had put together before the phone call started so we can close out with that and the um, outro. Today starts the jury selection for the Letitia Stauk um, trial uh, in regards to her stepson, Gannon Stauk, that I believe she murdered. Well, she is being charged uh, and faces her trial very soon. CDT has been following that as well. So I believe she's going live at 1.15 today and discussing um, true crime over there. So please check that out and head over there later in the afternoon. And I'll see you guys in chat. So I I just want to thank the moderators and everyone who's commented and for everyone on replay. Thank you so much. And to everyone who had donated, thank you so very much. And yeah, you guys have a wonderful day. We'll talk soon and just check back with the community posts on my next live stream or join my Facebook group and I'll link it in chat as we close out. So thank you again, guys. It's a long story. My son was in a boat wreck a few months back. I'm coming to England and I'll be there and I'm going to learn the accent and I'm going to learn how to work it and me and my boy are going to have a good time. He was a nice lad. Alex Murdoch at 4147 Moselle Road. I need the police to pass us immediately. Now I have an Alex Murdoch on the line caller from 4147 Moselle Road. He's advising that his wife and child was shot. I've been up to it now. It's bad. Do y'all store any weapons out here? Um, We don't store them, but they're... You know, they're frequently out here. Mm -hmm. I need to find out if there were any out here. I went to the house and I got a gun, probably overreacting, but that I own or that's in there now? That you own. All right, that I own. I mean, Paul has guns scattered all over the place. Some of our guns aren't there, but. 7.50 on June 7th, Maggie calls a Barbara, and that would be the last call that she ever made or received. She read a group text at 8.31, 16 seconds. The last read text was at 8.49, 27. It's an upward shot. Yours is one. She was just as beautiful inside as she was outside. I mean, she threw herself into her boy's life. I mean, you know, she never took not working uh, for granted. I mean, she, I mean, she might not have worked, but I promise you, she worked. And she worked to make sure me and Paul and Buster had everything. It looked like he had stolen. He denied to you three times that he ever went to those kennels, did he not? He did. His buddy, his friend, and his law partner of 34 years told you three times I was never there. That's that's and, correct. And you know now that's a lie. When I saw the video, 